Good morning. Welcome all you folks out there. For announcements today, your financial statements for the church, the, con the congregation, those are in your mailbox at the church. You can get them on a Monday or Thursday morning between 8 and 11. Today is the third Sunday of the month and two cents worth Sunday. So remember both offering as well as two cents. Let us quiet our hearts as we listen to the prelude. <clears throat> Thank you, Maggie. That was beautiful. Please join in the responsive call to worship. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forever. For God has anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim freedom for the captives, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. At Jesus' baptism, God confirmed, This is my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. Let us pray. O God, ruler of times and seasons, in every change you fulfill your steady purpose of grace. Beneath all that now in winter seems dark and cold, you are keeping safe the hidden germs of life. You are preparing the days ahead when the earth shall bud and bring forth harvest. Teach us by your course in nature to trust you in your dealings with us. Preserve in us the seed of that life which is life indeed. 
with your light and strength. Carry on your work of your grace in us. Amen. Our first hymn is here in this place. Please sing with us. sharing our joys and concerns. Nancy Klein and I visited Scott DeWall this week, and I got an update from Tom Klein last night. Uh, Scott was to go to Rockford for further testing and evaluation, but um, the doctor at Serenity spoke with his parents, and for now, he's going to continue to stay at Serenity House. Scott had his own plans for he thought he was going to go home. Um, I visited Marilyn on Wednesday afternoon. Marilyn is not doing well. She is miserable. She has to be very careful about even moving her head because she continues to be very, very dizzy. And when you're dizzy, often follows the nausea and the vomiting. Uh, Richard has been spending some nights over there, and Tuesday night, both Patty, Tricia, and Richard spent the night with Marilyn. I do have a concern with the amount of freezing rain freezing frost, little snow here and there. I know for myself, I have a fear of falling. Please, folks, take care. We don't want any fractured hips or anything that will further keep people away from church, meeting together when we are finally able to to reach that point within the pandemic when it becomes permissible. Our prayer hymn is, O oh Lord, Hear My Prayer. Please sing along.
O Lord, hear my prayer. A prayer for the people that we have mentioned this morning who are in need of healing. For Scott and Marilyn, for those that are still mourning the loss of a loved one. God, it has been another week of preparing for more violence in our nation. The numbers of National Guard and police for all 50 states, capitals, God, we anticipate, but what a joy it would be if we are wrong, that it continues to be a peaceful week. With the inauguration of a new president and the fading away of the days of the president, President Trump's term in office, without further violence. God, we need to unite this nation rather than further divide. Tomorrow we honor Martin Luther King's memory and his plea for racial justice Together, unitedness, not in times of violence, but peaceful. What an example. And still, we do not learn. Oh, that we knew your words of what it takes to be at peace to put those words to use in creating once again a nation of patriotism but not militarism that is required to somehow keep some peace. We out here in this small community have tended to feel safe. But with the news that we hear and the militia groups and the groups that are so totally against the will of the people, the majority of the will of the people in this last election, that they cannot accept the will of the people but instead want to turn this country into another civil war. How do we reach those people that are so bent on destroying our democracy? God, this morning there are so many people in their homes, feeling very safe. And we know that we cherish that safety and the freedom that we have. May it be so that in our prayers, with the power that you have given to Christianity in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we pray for peace, for unity, for healing, thy will to be done. And all God's people said, Amen. With the worshiping and giving of our gifts, let us pray.
All things come from you, O God, and with gratitude we return to you what is yours. You created all that is and with love formed us in your image. You gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. All that we are and all that we have in union with Christ's offering for us. Be your, by your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The farmer must wait patiently for his crops to grow. He can't hurry the process, but he doesn't take the summer off and hope that all goes well in the fields. There is much work to be done to ensure a good harvest. Our scripture today is from James 5, 7 through 12. In the same way, we must wait patiently for Christ's return. We can't make him come back any sooner. But while we wait, there is much work that we can do to advance God's kingdom. Both the farmer and the Christian must live by faith, looking toward the future reward for their labors. Don't live as if Christ will never come. Work faithfully to build his kingdom. The kingdom will come when the time is right, and so will the king. Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. The title of my sermon today is Patience While You Wait. And boy, do we need patience today. I read uh, this uh, study of how long we'll wait when Timex, the watch company, asked people how long they would wait before taking action. In a wide variety of situations, researchers discovered that we'll consent to wait only 13 seconds before we honk at a car in front of us that stopped at a green light. 26 seconds before we shush people who are talking in a movie theater. 26 seconds before we take the seat of someone who's walked away. 45 seconds before we ask someone who's talking too loud on a cell phone to keep it down. 13 minutes for a table at a restaurant. 20 minutes for a blind date to show up before we leave. I'm beyond that. And 20 minutes for the last person to show up for Thanksgiving Thanksgiving dinner before we dig in. That's a research study done by Timex. I know we are longing for the time when we can all get together and worship God. The passage today from James can help with that. Some churches, like some businesses, just put everyone on furlough and are still waiting until they can open the building and go back to some, some kind of quite, not quite normal, but close to it. The truth is, for any organization, if that season hasn't been long enough to make you think and act differently, then I don't know what will ever make you change. 
The way the world sees the church is very different to what the kingdom says the church is. There are some that believe the real church is on the rise, not in retreat in these days. Right now we are thinking about how and when we will meet. The when and how is nowhere near as as important as the why we meet. Our why hasn't changed at all. We are here to help people find their way back to God. We are here to make disciples who make disciples. The book of James was written when the church was not meeting in buildings. Church meeting in buildings is a how, not a why. Jesus never said we had to build buildings. He told his disciples that our job is to make disciples who make more disciples. And when we do our job, he will build his church, however, whenever, wherever, and with whomever we meet, he said. If there's a few of you meeting, I am there. I know many of us miss meeting together, and God has a word for us today. It is the word you have been waiting to hear, because it is all about patience. Jesus uses two different words for patience in the original language. One is about being patient and enduring in circumstances when it is hard to wait. James used the same word in chapter 1. The other word he introduces here is about being patient with people. And it really means long patience rather than having a short fuse with people. This is a test for when circumstances of people test your patience. The dictionary says impatience is when you are annoyed by somebody or something especially because you have to wait a long time. Think about that. Would you be impatient if you didn't have to wait in a long line? A pastor shared this recently about himself. He was driving his work, wife to work and telling her that he had to preach on various subjects. She said, you are the most impatient person that I know His response was, that's because you don't know many people, she said. I know lots of people. You are still the most impatient. His daughter Hannah said, are you going to give examples of how impatient you are? He said, like what? She said, well, you hate lines and the traffic or anyone going slower than you think they should walking or driving or replying slower than you think they should, anything when you have to wait. What a fine example of the lack of patience. How about you on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst, 1 being the best? James tells us two things he says will not help and three things that will help if we want to learn patience while you wait. Two things we might do if you're in line at the grocery store and you suddenly discovered it is the wrong line or behind that student driver who is driving slowly. What not to do. What doesn't help is grumbling and swearing. Verse 9 says, don't grumble against one another. Other translations use the word groan. Really, it is an internal word, not expressed aloud. Maybe you don't voice it, but that is ooh. Because often it means listening to terrible music, or you're in my way and somehow your body language lets people know that you are not happy with their behavior. Number two, James says don't swear. Where did James pick up that word? 
at the end of the reading. Where did he hear that? Could it be from the carpenter shop growing up? If we think about swearing, a picture that comes to mind is someone hitting their thumb with a hammer. But James' older brother, the carpenter of Nazareth, said as part of the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew 5:34, I say to you, do not swear at all, but let your yes be yes and your no be no. For whatever is more than these is from the evil one. James is repeating what Jesus said about swearing. So what if the way we change any of these areas of our lives is less about trying and more about dying? That is the way the Bible describes how God changes us now. We give up not just the old way, but the old self. Then we live a new life in the power of the Spirit. James says if we want to become more patient, don't grumble and don't swear. Then he tells us three things to do or think about while we are doing life, doing life. Waiting patiently when times are hard or people annoy us. What do we do? Take a look at yourself. Look again what James says. Be patient, therefore, until the Lord comes. Be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. The judge is standing at the door. Remember, God is patient. James is saying we should live every day as though Jesus could return today. He will judge everyone. Everyone. How different would we live? How patient would we be in how we judge people if we remembered we could be judged by God today? Martin Luther famously said, I have two days on my calendar, today and that day. James seems to have been the same way. When you read in his letter how many times he talks about Jesus coming back, do we live like that? It may be an insight into how God sees time now, too. We rush about and get impatient because we live by the clock and the diary, and all our appointments are on our cell phones. But God looks at heaven's calendar, and right now and every day of our lives, ever since Jesus came to earth, today, What is today? I think today is Sunday. Today is Sunday, tomorrow is Monday. God says today is the day of salvation. What time is it? Well, it's just a little after 9 o'clock. God says now is the time of my favor. So now is the time for us to be saved by his grace and get the word out to the world about his favor, whatever day, while there is still time. God is eternal, so he is never in a rush. The Bible says that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. A day for God is as a thousand years. Since Jesus ascended to heaven and sat at the right hand of God in glory, it's only been a couple of days to God. Have patience while you wait. But one day, time will literally run out, and it will be the day. What day? The day of the second coming of Christ, the day of judgment. The Apostle Peter wrote that it is most important to understand that in the last days, scoffers will come scoffing, saying, when's it going to happen, this day of Christ's coming? It's not happened yet. It's never going to happen. But one day the Father will say, it is that day. The word James uses here in Greek is parousia. It means arrival. 
Are we ready for the day when Christ arrives in glory to judge the living and the dead? The day that heaven opens, the King of kings and Lord of lords appears, and every eye shall see him, every knee bow before him. Peter says the only reason that day hasn't happened yet is because God is patient. He wants to give us more time for more people to realize that today is the day of salvation and choose heaven rather than hell. 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. He has been so patient, so loving with us. When I think about this pandemic and I think about the activities of January 6th, it's a miracle to us that God didn't decide that that was the day. The everlasting God is giving people time to ready now for eternity. So James says, don't grumble, don't swear while you wait, but remember, God is patient. God is like that patient farmer James mentions. He has sowed a lot of seed in this world. world. You don't plant one day and pull it up the next. You wait and see. Some of the seed falls on stony ground. Some gets burned up or choked out. But one day, God is going to reap a harvest. He is operating on farmer time, not factory time. Heaven operates in seasons. Even rainy seasons are part of making it grow. That is what you see when you look at history and time prophetically. Remember, the prophets were patient. James says, remember the prophets as an example of patience in the face of suffering. They spoke in the name of the Lord. They persevered. Some of those prophets were named while others were known only to God. Noah warned about things not yet seen, built the ark, and people thought he was crazy. Abraham was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. Sarah considered God faithful, and they didn't receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. That is an example of prophetic patience. Hebrews 11 lists many examples of patient faith. James says, if you want to learn patience, remember these prophets. And add in John the Baptist, too the New Testament prophets, and the present-day suffering and persecuted church. So don't grumble. Don't swear. Be patient because God is patient. And because his prophetic people are patient, waiting to see what God will do, and finally be patient. And remember, it's not over yet. The best example out of the entire Bible that James found is Job. Remember Job. He had it all. He lost everything. He was a good man. Nine kids, rich and happy, until Satan's attacks got personal. Thieves took away his properties. Lightning struck his possessions. Death took all his children. Sickness took its toll, his friends turned out to be hopeless, and his wife said, Why not just curse God and die? What did Job do? He didn't grumble. He didn't swear. He got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. He waited and worshipped, 
yet he is grieving. He has his questions. Forty chapters full of questions. And he's waiting. His friends couldn't answer those questions, and when God shows up, he says, you wouldn't understand even if I told you. Face to face with God, Job knows it's true. He says, I spoke of things I didn't understand, things too wonderful for me to know. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. After Job had prayed for his friends who were hopeless, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He died an old man. Job was a prophet too. He heard and saw God. Though it was through the tough times, he saw him most clearly. I spoke several weeks ago about it's the troubled times, the times of trial and test, that we become closer to God. We need those experiences. While you wait, God is patient, and it will be better in the end if it isn't better yet. That is because it isn't the end. Be patient while you wait. Amen. Our closing hymn is Lead On, O Cloud of Presence. Please sing along. gathered as the family of faith we worship to honor the living God through Christ we become God's holy household in Christ we are bonded together to be God's people our worship is bonded into oneness by the Holy Spirit in communion with the Holy Spirit let us celebrate our unity as we go into a troubled world in need of unity and peace And all God's people said, Amen.